Hello, friends. I have a question today. Will free people ever be able to trust the medical establishment ever again? Over the last decade, how many times have we been lied to by the medical establishment? For how long has the medical establishment been mm, more interested in treating symptoms than ever curing anything? In fact, when's the last time in your memory the medical establishment announced we have a cure for a disease. Take this one treatment, whatever the regimen is, and it will cure you. Cure. That's a word they never use. You have a, you have a problem? We can fix it. No. We can help you live with it as long as you pay us every month for more medicine. I mean, look what they did during the prolonged and slightly more, mm, I, what's the word I want to say? During the cervasus sickness, I hesitate to even use the word on this channel that lacks such freedom to talk about it. Uh, they changed the word vaccine. When I was a kid, Dr. Salt he came up with a polio vaccine, and the government mandated it. Polio was a horrible disease. Young kids would come out of the womb with polio, and they were crippled for life. Trouble walking, trouble with everything. Horrible disease. But Dr. Salt came up with a cure, a vaccine that prevented polio from being spread. We nearly eradicated that disease around the world. In fact, people went around the world trying to vaccine everybody in the world to eradicate it. I understand there's a couple cases of it now, but not a lot but they, it has crept back in. But through that vaccine, we basically prevented it. And then, of course, we were mandated to get the vaccine. And I want to tell you right now, I'm going to look you right in the eye and say, I was a sucker. I couldn't wait for the vaccine to become available because all the information that the media put out at the government's request was, if you're old, you're at more at risk of dying. If you're fat, you're more at risk of dying. Wow, that hit me on two counts. Sign me up if you've got a vaccine. Because, see, I grew up with the word vaccine meant it prevented something. Take the vaccine, and you will not get whatever. Now, I took the shingles vaccine, one and two. Supposedly, it will prevent you from getting shingles. I haven't heard where it doesn't yet. But in the Cervasus lockdown around the world, 
those vaccines didn't do anything. In fact, they caused more harm and so many cases of people who are now thinking that whatever ailment they have may have been caused by that vaccine. I mean, Noy has brought up to me more than once, could the vaccines that she took have caused her to now be having problem with her blood sugars? Never had before. I don't know. But it sure didn't prevent anybody from getting the disease. I got COVID twice. Now, was it bad when I got? No. Neither are colds and, and slight cases of flu. All I know is every time I sniffled, Noid want to go and stick something deep up my nose and put a drop on and see if I had COVID. A couple times it said yes. Do we even really believe some of those quick up-the-nose tests? Now, I ran out. I got my three vaccines from Moderna. And I did it for a couple reasons. One, I wanted to leave the country. By God, they weren't letting you get on a plane and go anywhere without a vaccine. You couldn't get anywhere. You couldn't do anything. The government's forced you. Will we ever be able as a free people to trust the, quote, medical establishment? The medical cabal. Now, I just listened to a podcast of a, of a guy who covers some financial stuff from Australia. And over Australia, they had one case of a human with avian flu. And I'm telling you the truth. Australia is off their, off their rails. This guy seriously looked like he was concerned that they were going to lock the country down for avian flu like they did over the Cervasa sickness. I mean, he he's really worried. He looks worried. And he also brought up the fact that Australians gave up their guns many years ago. So ever since that happened, Australia's turned into an authoritarian state. Make no doubt about it. They didn't even let their own citizens enter their country during the Cervasa sickness. If you were a citizen of the country of Australia, you couldn't come in. Stay out. You might have you might be sick. We won't, we don't want to help you. And they didn't let their people leave. To be honest, In the comments, tell me why you you can argue that Australia is not really more socialist and Marxist than they are a democratic society whose government is more interested in protecting its people than in subjugating its own people. So my question is. And this goes back to the health question of eating right and everything. I mean, you know, for years they said eat a heart-healthy diet. Yeah, have some cereal in the morning. Hell, Kellogg's is telling people if you're crushed for money here because the government's been debasing your currency and... uh Remember that big box of cereal that we now only fill halfway up to the top? Well, try eating that for dinner too. It's full of it's full of carbs and sugar. 
Just throw some milk on it and have it. Mm mm mm. Good. Let's try some Captain Crunch. This was Kellogg's. Let's try some Corn Flakes. We can't trust the medical establishment. We can't trust our own food industry. I swear. Okay. I can ask the question. Are we overregulated? Are we overregulated? Could we abolish the DEA? Could we finally end the war on drugs? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a drug user. But if you want to put something in your body, it used to be your body, put what you want in it. But no, we, we've got to we gotta have a war on drugs. That's so the pharmaceutical companies can win. You know, if 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 other avenues existed. Would the pharmacies have been able to make billions and billions, tens and hundreds of billions selling opioids over the last 20 years? If the war on drugs didn't exist, no. Is the FDA still warranted? How about the doctors who knew that during the cervasis sickness, people who were taking zinc and ivermectin were knocking the cervasis sickness totally down, and it worked, and the pills cost 10 cents a pill. Very reasonable. $2 worth of mess, and you could knock it out. And the medical establishment were taking those doctor's licenses for prescribing a medicine that had been approved and been safe and warranted for over 60 years. And billions and billions of those pills have been dispensed with no side effects. They were used to cure all kinds of things. But no, they were called horse medicine, and the doctors who wanted to give it to their patients, some of them were hauled in front of the medical boards. Some of them lost their license or were suspended. S some were kicked off of YouTube. Some were censored because... There were billions and billions and billions of federal dollars being able to be transferred. Your dollars, if you live in the United States, same for England, same for Australia. The governments was giving the taxpayers money to the pharmaceutical companies by the tens of billions of dollars. And the damn medicine wasn't a vaccine. It didn't work. It didn't prevent people from getting the sickness. Now, don't get me wrong. In the first three or four months of 2020, there were a lot of people dying of that sickness because the doctors did not know how to treat it. I mean, I got scared myself when a friend of mine a very cool dude. He delivers trailers, storage trailers, all kinds of trailers, been delivering them for years. Well, he reported that he delivered refrigerated trailers from Cincinnati, Ohio, to Detroit, Michigan, to a hospital up there. 
And no sooner he dropped the trailer off, they were putting body bags with people who had died from that awful case of the flu. Horribly enhanced case of the flu. And he delivered like four of those up to Detroit. They had to go all the way to Cincinnati, a four-hour, more than four-hour drive away, I guess, to get them because there was a shortage. And so many people were dying up there that they ended up getting four refrigerated trailers just to hold the bodies. They couldn't hold them at the hospital or the morgue. Well, when Bill told me that, Man, get me that vaccine. Because when I grew up, they said you had vaccine. It was like the polio vaccine. It actually worked. It prevented you from getting something. I've gotten COVID at least twice. I may have had three or four times and not even known it. The, the medical establishment said, wear a mask. Wear, wear, wear a N95. Oh, no, you don't need an N95. You can use a cloth mask. Heck, put two cloth masks on. That'll even work better, Fauci said. That's a bunch of crap. Now, the N95 is a good mask. If you were going to wear one and you were willing to wear that stiff-fitting, most uncomfortable mask, which I had some, I admit, until I figured out the truth. Why did it take so long to figure out the truth? Because we relied on the information we were given. And if anybody tried to put out other information online, they were censored, their accounts were shut down. The, the FBI had 80 people. Just watched the congressional hearing on it. 80 people in the FBI whose job it was to comb through posts on social media, contact the platforms that, that held those posts and intimidate them into having the posts shut down. 80 people's job it was to censor mis- and disinformation. What was the truth? And it costs a lot of people in Thailand here. They followed the United States lead and locked down this country. They didn't lock it down until 21. They went through the all of 2020, and Thailand had the least amount of cases in the world. They didn't lock anything down. But then they ran scared, too, under pressure from the World Health Organization what a corrupt organization that is. Corrupt. Well, they locked the place down over here. They damn near bankrupted 60% of their population. They crushed Noi. No, no way to earn any money for two and a half years that they had this place tore up and then it returned slow. By that time, the people who had money loaned it out on the private to those that they knew were good people at outrageous interest rates. They were both helping people that they knew needed it, but th they did it unofficially, and they were doing it at interest rates that are were obscene. I mean, pay us every month, you know, 10% a month. And they were taking people's titles and everything to to leverage them to get make sure they got paid. But they only gave it to the people they liked and the people they knew were good, decent people. 
But the ones who had money at the time, the wealthy here, they got a lot wealthier by preying on the victims of the establishment. Now, you, you wonder why I go off like this. So do I. But this is a channel about trying to be healthier. And what do you do in a world where can, a, can free people trust what they hear about medical anything? Uh, here where I am near Patia, drinking is a uh, national pastime. Tourists come in, they drink from noon till whenever. They drink. Lots of people here drink. They get drunk. Drinking kills people. But yet, now the establishment's thinking, thinking, discussing, wanting to, again, change their laws on Mary Jane. Mary Jane doesn't kill people the way alcohol does. Very seldom have I ever heard anybody uh, smoking a doobie want to go hold somebody up or stab them with a knife or shoot them. Hell, they just want to lay back, smile, and laugh. But no, the medical establishment, they can't stand it. Because they want to tell everybody what it is they want them to do. And that's that way the world over. I'm not picking on Thailand. Believe me, this place, on a scale of 1 to 10, the United States is a 3, and Thailand's an 8. Thailand's good. There's a lot more freedom here than there is in the United States. Now, I know a lot of people who've never left the United States think the United States may be the best country in the world. But it's not. It's not the best country in almost anything. It is the best country of borrowing money and saddling its people with the debts. It probably can debase its currency better than any other country in the world. But it's not the best in health care. It's not the best in education. It's not the best in a lot of things. In fact, it's not the best in almost anything other than those things. It's got some of the finest, most corrupt establishment in the world. I again ask, how do these congressmen and senators arrive in Washington with an average net worth and then leave with millions and millions, sometimes even nine figures of net worth? How's that work on a couple hundred thousand dollars a year of normal salary? Anyway, that's my thoughts for today at Going Carnivore in Thailand. I think tonight I'm just going to have eggs and bacon instead of a steak. Eat a little lighter. So I hope you had a good Memorial Day. If you made it to the end, let me know you made it to the end. I know this has been a long video, but... Sometimes I just go on a rant and bring out things that are here to provoke thought. So if it provokes any thoughts, write them down in the comments. Engage. Share this with your friends. And uh, beware of the establishment in the United States. They may let you down.
Uh, the, 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 that's all, folks.